what is the scientific method? He says, uh, again, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the logic of scientific discovery, he talks about the game of science. So he describes science as a game with certain rules. We do play a game when we abide by the rules of that game, just like chess. We, are, we play chess if we abide by the rules of the game. We cannot move the bishop, for example, in any way we please. Otherwise, we are not playing chess anymore. We are playing something different. The same, said Popper says, is true about science. He says, the game of science is in principle without end. He who decides one day that the scientific statements do not call for any further test, and that they can be regarded as finally verified, retires from the game. Incidentally, we may spot here the, a, 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 the close connection between Popper's philosophy of science and Popper's political philosophy. Uh, I'm not talking about Popper's political philosophy here, but I just want to call attention to this point. If we change some terms in the sentence I've just read, we may actually see the kernel of Popper's political philosophy as will be developed in the Open Society and its enemies published in 1945. So to repeat, the game of science is in principle without end. Let's replace science with democracy. We can say the game of democracy is in principle without end. He who decides one day that scientific statements uh, do not call for any further test. We may say he who decides that uh, rulers and their decisions or rulers and their acts do not call for any further test and that they can be regarded as finally verified, we re replace verified with approved and that they can be regarded as finally approved retires from the game. That is retires from democracy. From this sentence, we can actually see the close connection, really the close link between Popper's um, epistemological ideas and his political ideas. I'm not going further into this, but I, I think it's quite uh, uh, interesting to note that. Someone who gets, for example, elected, and then once he has elected democratically by elections, right? So, and when, when he, he or she is in power and then does away with democracy, abolishes democracy, we cannot say, uh, well, he was elected democratically, we have to accept that. No, because he or she in that case is not, is deciding at some point when in power to do away with the rules of the game he was playing. So he was, is not, he or she is no longer playing or abiding by the rules of the game of democracy in that case. So if this is the definition of the game of science, so to say, what are the rules of the game of science? Popper offers a number of rules, but he does not say this is the, uh, the rules of method. These are the rules of method. This is the uh, 10 or 15 or uh, two rules of methods uh, of method, uh, which we cannot do uh, without. Uh, he says any possible rules of method, any possible uh, methodology is only offered as a proposal, as a convention, in view of a given aim, in view of a given end. We propose different rules in, this, uh, in different scientific disciplines in order to better achieve that aim or that end. That does not mean that we cannot change those rules at some point or another. Just as chess might be defined by the rules proper to it, so empirical science may be defined by means of its methodological rules. In establishing these rules, we may proceed systematically. But then he says there is a supreme rule, a higher rule, or a, in the hierarchy, so to say, of methodological rules, there is a, a higher rule. And this is it. A supreme rule is laid down which serves 
as a kind of norm for deciding upon the remaining rules, and which is thus a rule of a higher type. It is the rule which says that the other rules of scientific procedure must be designed in such a way that they do not protect any statement in science against falsification. This is the supreme rule. We should not, um, how can I say, we should not, uh, pre in, when faced with a falsification, we should not pretend as if it did not happen. We should not defend our theory, our hypothesis from any criticism. Otherwise, we stop playing by the games of science. Otherwise, we uh, we uh, retire from the game of science, as Papa says. Uh, Marx's theory was, at the beginning, scientific. It made some predictions, and these predictions formed what Popper's called the um, set of potential falsifiers of the theory because it, they could clash with some evidence, with some experimental evidence. In fact, uh, Marx's predictions were eventually falsified by what, ha what happened in society. But what did Marxists do in front of these falsifications? They changed the theory, or they corrected the theory, or actually uh, inserted some ad hoc hypothesis, as Popper says, in order to prevent the theory from being falsified. In so doing, they actually prevented the theory from being falsified, but they ended up lowering uh, the, uh, the, the, the number of potential falsifiers, thereby, therefore gradually uh, depriving the theory from any content. We should uh, not do that, Popper says, otherwise uh, we uh, so to say, we stick to our theory, but it's a theory that says uh, nothing uh, interesting about the world. And let me close with a final quote from, from the last, actually, pages of uh, the original version of the Logic of Scientific Discovery. As you can see, I don't know whether you can see the book I have in my hands here. Uh, this I'm, I'm reading from these two pages here. And so, as you can see, there is, there is much more, there are many more pages to, to this book, but these are just appendices added to the English edition of the book. This was actually the, the last few pages of the original German edition. So, wh what is the conclusion about this philosophical discourse? What is the conclusion Popper draws from his arguments in the logic of scientific discovery? Popper says, Science is not a system of certain or well-established statements, mm -hmm. nor is it a system which steadily advances towards a state of finality. Our science is not knowledge in the sense of episteme. It can never claim to have attained truth or even a substitute for it, such as probability. Yet science has more than a mere uh, biological survival value. It is not only a useful instrument, but we do not know. We can only guess. And our guesses are guided by the unscientific metaphysical faith in laws, in regularity. And finally, the advance of science is not due to the fact that more and more perceptual experiences accumulate in the course of time. The growth of knowledge, of scientific knowledge, is not heating up uh, evidences or um, experiences from time to time, nor is it due to the fact that, they, that we are making ever better use of our senses. The old idea, the old scientific ideal of episteme, of absolutely certain demonstrable knowledge, has proved to be 
an idol. The demand for scientific objectivity makes it inevitable that every scientific statement must remain tentative forever. It may indeed be corroborated, but every corroboration is relative to other statements, which again uh, are tentative. With the idol of certainty, including that of degrees of imperfect certainty or probability, there falls one of the defenses of obscurantism, which bar the way of scientific advance, of scientific progress. For the worship of this idol, the idol of certainty, hampers not only the boldness of our questions, but also the rigor and the integrity of our tests. The wrong view of science betrays itself in the craving to be right, for it is not his possession of knowledge of a refutable truth that makes the man of science, Popper says, but his persistent and recklessly critical quest for the truth. Truth remains forever a sort of Kantian ideal, a regulative ideal, as Kant said, something we have to aim uh, at well, something we have to strive for, but something we will never be able to achieve, or, or if uh, even if we stumble upon, upon the truth, Popper says, we will never be able to know that. Could have been a very helpful, I think, in for the public understanding of science in a time of pandemic. This idea that uh, science progresses through. Uh, conjectures, advances by tentative solutions to problems that can be shown to be false, to be, and therefore can, can be criticized and improved upon. If we uh, do away with the idea that science is something, uh, is scientific is a synonym for true, then uh, I think uh, we would better understand in a Popperian way uh, the true nature or the real nature of the scientific enterprise. 